Hi everyone, my name is Sean Levick from the Geospatial Ecology and Remote Sensing Lab, Charles Darwin University. Just wanted to give you a quick introduction today into how to import shapefiles um, into Google Earth Engine for use in the monitoring projects that you have coming up. So your final report is based on an assessment on the Tiwi Islands and to complete this you need to make use of some um, long-term fire experiments and monitoring plots that have been set up on the island. Let's start by navigating to Darwin in Google Earth Engine. Click on Darwin Northern Territory, here we are. And if we navigate a bit further north and zoom out, here we have the Tiwi Islands. Um, Generally, you'll be used to dealing with vector data in the form of, of shapefiles or sometimes KMLs in, in Google Earth. And the way that Google Earth Engine makes use of vector data is through Google Fusion Tables. So if you search for Fusion Tables, you'll come to the site um, fusiontables.google.com. And this allows you to import either a um, well, a variety of different file formats, um, spreadsheets, CSVs, KMLs, into Google Fusion Tables. So the easiest is just to um, either save your shapefiles as a .kml or draw the KML in Google Earth and then import it as a Fusion Table. Now, I have, once you've completed this part and imported a Fusion Table, it will look like this. So this is what I am providing to you for the assessment. Um, it's a shapefile containing uh, four different sites, Imalu, Picatiramo, Shark Bay, Terracumbi. There's a treatment column which specifies the experimental fire treatment. So we have unburned plots, one-year plots burnt on an annual basis, three-year plots burnt on a triangle basis. Um, within the fusion table, we can see a map of that geometry, which we'll just load up now. We can see the spread of the different sites across the islands. And um, for actually bringing them into Earth Engine, the most important thing is if we go and file here about this table, you'll see that we have a unique identifier. Uh, you don't need to remember all those numbers, just remember that we have a unique identifier. If you're making your own uh, fusion tables, remember that you need to share them with other users. So I've shared this table with you. If you go to your Earth Engine environments again, um, you should have a ENV, so um, Environmental Monitoring and Modeling 2017 folder. In there, you'll see a couple of scripts, TV fire plots. If you click on that, this is what the script is for importing that fusion table I was just showing you. Variable fire plots equals Earth Engine feature collection feature table, and this is the unique identifier. So this is the file. Um, where did it go? About this table. There we have it. That's the identifier. So we just copy that and paste it in there. Now what I want you to do is copy this little piece of code, copy it, create a new script for yourself, paste that in again. And if you hover over here, you'll see the option of converting this to an import record. Let's do this. Let's say convert. And what it's done is it's now created a fire plots geometry variable, which is the fusion table TV fire experiment plots. It has 18 rows and three columns. It's quite nice as if we just click on that, we can see that information like looking at the attribute table of a shape file. So we have the site, the treatment, and the name. Now I've added a, just a line of code here for you. Map add layer fire plots, fire plots. And if we run that, that's going to bring up the fire plot locations in Earth Engine, and you'll have fire plots as a, as a layer that you can switch off and on. If we zoom in a bit closer, 
we can flick to satellite view and we can see where these plots are located. Now, if you'd like to separate out, um, say, unburned plots from annual or triannual plots, we need to enter a bit of code, which I've got over here. Copy, paste. And I'm just going to talk you through one example, and you'll be able to do the rest yourselves then. Um, we, can, we could query, when we're extracting um, reflectance values or NDVI values for these different treatments, we could do it within the script, but for a first cut, you, you may want to create three different variables so that you have different layers for unburnt, annual burnt, or three event. So here I'm creating the variable triennial. I'm creating that from the geometry fire plots. I'm applying a filter, Earth Engine filter. I want to query the treatment column and pull out rows that match three year. I'm then going to add that layer triennial to the map with the map name burnt every three years. So let's run that. Now if we come to our layers tab, we have fire plots and burnt every three years. If we switch those all off, we click that. These are just the plots that are burnt every three years. If we were then interested in the annual burns, all we would do is copy this, paste it there. I'm going to call this annual, annual and change that to one year. We need to check what it's called. We can come in here. Yep, that's right. One year. Burnt every one year. Burnt every year. Would be fine as a title. Let's run that. And now we have three layers, so we can switch that off. These are burnt every year. So these plots are burnt every year. And these plots are burnt every three years. That's um, by following these commands, you'll be able to, to separate out plots for the fire component of the um, assignment. Um, you'll see I've also created a, let's just always save your, your scripts, TV fire plot selection, okay. Um, also in this folder, you'll see I've created one for TV monitoring plots, and this refers to a feature table. Um, I'll just show it to you, so we copy it, and clear the script so that you now have your own script. Paste, hover, convert. We now have the variable monitoring plots. You click on that and you'll see that the, there are um, six savanna monitoring plots and six plantation monitoring plots. Which if we run this, just quickly show you where they are, you'll see that they are distributed around the, the islands. These are quite small, 50 meter radius. If we flick to the satellite, you can see where they are located. All right, that should be enough for on the vector side for you to be able to work through. Let me know if you have any questions. And good luck, everyone.